Hi, my name is David Revoix and in this video tutorial I want to show you a concept art I made back in October 2017. It was a concept art done for the project Spring and it's a project run by the Blender Foundation and this concept art was a collaboration with Andy Goralchik, the director of the movie and I am the art director so I made the concept art on this movie. So let's just start in it. Uh, the first part was a 3D model and Andy provided me the 3D model with the space and all the room uh, made in Blender for a little house, a hut and uh, I could reuse a render of the internal of the hut and I chose uh, a render that showed the overall of the, of the hut. So that was my starting point and it was a pretty advanced render uh, and, and then I started to paint over it. So one of the first things that was really obvious when I started to receive the render, it was the number of information was too high in it. Uh, you can see the texture for the stone, you can see uh, all the details, all the, the noise also, because the, the 3D render made a noise and made a lot of sharp edges. But, but that's normal because that was just a mock-up so it's not a finished 3D model, it was just a helper for me to paint over and it, it's already pretty advanced. Uh, this render is already amazing for just a, a mock-up and there is also some color of material and there is also some light and, and it's pretty, pretty advanced. So in order to break a bit all of this detail, the best method for me was to feed the, the render to the gimmick filter photocomic smoothing. So I'm just here typing photocomic smoothing and, and, and this smoothing filters will just smooth every detail but keep some revealing detail and what I like is if you put a little bit of sharpness on it uh, you can get uh, like a soft painterly effect. Uh, and this will really ease and make much more easier the, the, the paint over process. So when my image is smoothed, I can paint over the pixel. So I just duplicate the base layer to be sure to can still compare with the base render and over my, my picture or my layer. And I start to paint with a zoom from, from very distant. So here I'm in 25% and uh, I will accelerate a bit the video because it's a three hour long project maybe it took me four hours with the uh, little feedback after because I, I changed something so uh, but I will accelerate and uh, I will skip on my screen with the mouse so I can still comment what happens and and then I start with a rounded brush j just a basic one and I put some big mass and I start to fix the the big things so I had the missing object I start to dirt what looks a bit too, too clean and I'm adding a lot of fabrics and all of this because of course all the fabrics takes a lot of time to make in 3D so the scene wasn't containing any and I'm trying to focus on the big mass. When I painted enough detail over this 3D viewport, still at a very distant zoom level, uh, so I can keep looking at the overall, I tried to put back on the top a perspective guideline and this will allow me to have some guide when I will zoom and detail the artwork. So it's very important to recover a sort of perspective and I put that in a layer on the top. With my perspective guideline reduced in opacity, I can then start to detail 
and I will be more accurate to follow the perspective of the scene. And I start to zoom in just a little bit more. So I was at 25% and I can zoom now at 33 or 30%. And so I can take a smaller brush and start to take the detail of the overall. So I still don't zoom on a specific part of the artwork, but I start to add some little object and some uh, specific rim light to, to, the, to the piece in general. But I still keep the overall viewport. This artwork is not really detailed as could be a cover illustration or illustration for printing. This is a concept art and it's just to transmit the general idea. So when my work is almost done with the detail and I keep the overall view, I don't dive on purpose into the zoom to detail, thin texture or everything. I go to the gimmick filter color grading and I adjust a bit the light and the shadow. I also use a lot of blending mode brush just to give a little kick of the light and to rise the contrast on, of some part and give a, a, just a deeper vignette effect around the picture. At this point of the artwork, the overall picture was already looking good and already conveying a lot of information but I wanted to spend an extra hour just to add some little tiny details and a lot of little objects around the picture and just to assure that all the material are described even if it's a picture it's still possible to add some little things here and there that tell some storytelling so that's what I did so I will accelerate this part of course for you to see because it's probably all compressed into one hour. And the interesting things about this is you will probably see me sometime rotating the picture uh, upside down. And this is just a way to check if uh, all the volume are correctly shaded because uh, it's the same effect than looking at your artwork into a mirror. Uh, if you look at your artwork into a mirror, it tricks your brain and in front of a new picture you see a lot of little mistake and error and it helps you to fix it but if you turn your picture upside down you'll focus a bit more on the volume that are totally reversed so the surface that show the bottom on the illustration uh, suddenly will be a lot more into focus and it's very really good to fix some shading so that's why I, I, I spent a, a, a little time on the detailing of this artwork uh, totally upside down because there was so many little objects and especially for the roof that, that I could just detail better while looking at this. So if you need to, to turn your artwork upside down, uh, the best way is to use the numpad key four or six on Krita and it will rotate your artwork step by step. And when you want to reset the, the rotation, you can press five. Uh, also, if you right click on the mouse on Krita 4, you have like a widget around the palette, the pop-up palette, and you can rotate from there your artwork. And this is uh, a really good tip, especially when you are detailing. I don't advise you to do this uh, at the first step. 
it's really when you want to clean all the volume. So that's all for this commented time-lapse. I hope you liked it. And if you really want to know more about the Spring project, it's still ongoing as I'm recording this video, you can connect to the Blender Cloud. And if you support the Blender Cloud, you can access a lot of bonus made by the team. And actually you can see uh, the little character of Spring. Uh, you can see some shot already rendered and everything as a bonus if you subscribe to the Blender Cloud. So I hope you liked the video. It's a time-lapse commented. It's a very difficult exercise because I had to record my voice and at the same time bruise through the video and find uh, little things I did in the past that are relevant to make a new tutorial video. If you don't like this format, feel free to comment and interact with me. It's always helpful to get feedback. And if you prefer something else, just also comment and I will learn a lot about it. So thank you for being around, thank you for watching, bye bye.